Well, hello, friends. Today, we are going to make some kind of um, file system notification mechanism um, because I would like the file manager to be able to notice when something changes in the directory that's open. So say that we have, um, you know, we'll go to my home directory here and I will create a file here called foo. Um, I would like it to show up here right away without me having to like leave directory and leave the directory and then come back, right? Because now it's here. And um, yeah, so we need some kind of mechanism for that. Um, and I'm not exactly sure how that should work, but I figured it would be um, something that you um, ask the kernel for. Um, you would say, give it like a path and then it would give you back a file descriptor and then uh, you can select on that file descriptor and uh, whenever there's a modification to that path, um, then we would um, be able to read something from the file descriptor, basically. Like that, that's, I guess, how I imagine it. So um, I haven't looked at how other systems implement this kind of thing, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like go from that instinct and see if that works out. So um, let's see, where do we start? I guess we can try to start by, uh, let's make a little test app for this. So let's call it um, userland um, mon for monitor, I guess. And we'll refresh and we'll open up mon cpp. All right, mon, mon, mon. Um, probably we'll put it in for control. So that's where this type of thing normally goes. And um, let's also get act log stream because it's comfy. All right. Uh, okay. And then what do we call this API? I guess um, watch, watch. Does that make sense? Maybe FS watch. FS watch. F watch. File system watch. Watch file. Watch file is kind of nice. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then we'll say, uh, I guess, dot. Um, we can do it like this actually in path. It's arch C. Um, it's greater than one. If so, we'll watch arch V1. Otherwise, we'll watch dot path. All right. We are going places. So um, in this draft or in this initial implementation, we're only going to watch for modifications, but then in the future, I guess we might want to support stuff like watching for, um, like adding files, removing files, um, renaming mode changes, um, you know, like all kinds of stuff. Right. But right now we're just going to watch for like, Hey, something changed about this directory, I guess, or this file. Um, so I think Basically, we're going to hook this wherever we change the M, M time, like the modification time of a file. Whenever we update the metadata, we'll just also do a, uh, we'll notify this thingy. So uh, let's see. And then we can, I guess we can do like a blocking read here in a loop. So we'll just say um, if FD is less than zero, then we'll fail out. So we'll say like, um, unable to watch. Uh, and then that will give us the error message. And then we can just return one. And then otherwise we will um, loop and say, um, read from, and we can rename this thing here to watch FD. Um, and then we're going to need the dio. We read from watch FD. 
talking to the buffer, which is just some buffer. It doesn't need to be any particular size. I guess we can we can just start like this. Size of buffer. And we'll say if our C is less than zero, p error. Read. Time one. Um, and then I guess here we'll say like uh, something changed about the file we're watching. And I guess. Let's print the path here that we're using. Okay, so I think that that's pretty good for a test program. We just have to go and implement this syscall. So first we'll add a syscall called watch file. And then we will make sure that we call, okay, syscall sc watch file current process is watch file and then um, I guess we're gonna take a path but we should also take a path length because that's just sensible so we'll do it that way um, and we're gonna have to edit mon a little bit and we're gonna have to save and we also pass the stir line of the path it's okay I, I really like um, I changed this recently so that like this is called like open. Um, you can call open where the hell is open. Uh, there's a variant of open that also uh, takes the path length. I feel like it's slightly better than um, forcing because this API here it forces you to um, do like a stir line. But if you already know the length of the path, then uh, it's cool if you have a way to pass it. So I added these syscalls and then open here actually um, it's just a wrapper around the other one that does a stir line for you. Um, but this allows us to uh, use open when we know the stir line without doing a second stir line. I don't know, it's just a little thing that I liked. Anyways, <clears throat> I would like to do new syscalls that way so that we don't like, pass um, null terminated strings to the kernel but we instead like pass string and length. Okay, anyways, enough about that. Uh, so let's see if we can add this here. So this is file open const char path and length, I guess path length. All right. Um, and where is this open? So I'm thinking like, what is this similar to? I guess it's a little bit similar to SysTrace because SysTrace is the mechanism by which we implement um, strace. And the way that SysTrace works is that it creates this thing called a process tracer. Uh, where is it? Here, we call it ensure tracer on the PID that we want to trace. And this, what this does is it instantiates the process tracer for that PID. And then the process tracer is this um, funky class that just accumulates um, a list of all the syscalls that have been made in a process. Um, and I'm thinking that what we want to build here is kind of similar to that, that we want to create an object that just accumulates a list of, um, I guess, modification events, basically, um, that are relevant to a specific inode. So first thing we're going to do here is we're going to validate that the string that we're being passed is um, you know, readable by us. So we do that by just saying, if not validate read path, path length, then we return default. You get a bad address error right away. Then we are going to, um, I guess, try to turn it into an inode. So uh, what's the easiest way to do that? VFS um, resolve path. I'll give this a custody, which I guess that we can use that. So custody or um, error uh, resolve path, and then we give it the, um, the path, and then we give it um, the current working directory. 
What's that called? Current working directory custody. Current directory. Ah, there you go. And then we don't care what the parent is, and we don't care about passing any options really. So just this is good. We'll say if custody or error is error, then we'll return. Then we'll return the error. Okay. Now we know that we have the custody, so we can just custody or error value auto inode. We should really take the inode at this point. So we'll say normal ref pillar of inode custody dot inode. Okay, so now we have our very own copy of this inode here. And why am I not allowed to do this? Because we have to do that. Right. That's fine. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to put this guy into some kind of a file watcher class object thing. So I guess we'll put this in the file system in the kernel and we'll call it inode watcher. Is that good? It's pretty good, right? Inode watcher. I can live with that because it's not really like a file watcher because the file could be like a socket or something like that. And this is specifically about inodes. So inode watcher, I think it's a fair, it's a good enough name. So let's see about um, actually making one of those. So if, uh, um, inode watcher, what was the name? So let's write the class out. Inode watcher public file. Because this is going to be like a file. A file is anything that can be um, referenced by, by a file descriptor. So like anything that in user space is represented by a file descriptor in the kernel that's a file so it's a um, it's a handy base class for everything like that so we will include kernel file system file and then we are going to have a couple of pure virtuals that we have to implement so it's a bunch of them we'll just get them here Say override for all of these. Override. Override. IOCuddle. Well, we don't care about IOCuddle. And we don't care about MMAP. The class name is definitely inode watcher. So I know that one. We don't care about truncate. I guess we can implement absolute path. Let's say override here too. Okay, so now we have like a little list here of things that we have to implement. Um, and we should, of course, also give it a constructor. So it's going to be an explicit constructor that takes, um, I guess the easiest thing here is to just take the inode. So I'll say, hey, take an inode like this. And then we'll, we will take ownership of this inode here, I think. So. Um, at least, I mean, shared ownership. Because as long as there's a watcher for an inode, uh, for now, I think we'll keep the inode alive, but then eventually we should allow the inode to go away. I mean, it's kind of weird if the inode can't go away. Maybe watch, watching shouldn't keep it alive. That's really strange. Um, we should not take ownership. We should uh, be a weak putter. So inode is ref counted, but not weakable. So we have to make inode weakable. That's easy. Just do that. And I think this part is fine. And then we'll forward declare inode. Uh, and we will add a virtual inode watcher uh, override. All right, so um, do we have everything we care about? I guess we are gonna need ACK. Weak putter, all right. Okay, I think we're maybe good to start sketching out some of these functions. Um, 
Crew, File System, Unknown, Watcher. Start with some easy ones. Uh, constructor. I'll we'll just say inode. Um, initialize with inode make weak putter. Why don't you like it? Member access into incomplete type. How about if I include inode? Now you really don't like me. Um, did I forget to make inheritance public? Yes, I did. Oopsie doopsie. There we go. All right. And then we'll do the destructor. And then we'll do can read. So can read, I guess, is really the, the meat and potatoes of this whole class here because it's all about um, can read is the thing that select uses in the kernel to determine if select should um, consider a file descriptor readable. So once you start returning true from can read, that means that select will return um, and tell user space that like, hey, this file descriptor can be read, hence can read. Um, so can read only takes a file description like that, right? Yeah, actually that should probably be const. That's weird that I don't have that. Um, do I need to write that down? No, I'll, I'll remember that and fix it up. Um, and this should return a bool. And can write, I suppose, should always um, return true. And then it should also probably always fail to write. So um, what do we do for that? I guess, I mean, let's start with this thing. So how do we say that it's readable? I guess if there are some events. So we can maybe come up with some event representation with like struct event. Um, and it will just, we'll just say like type type. Um, something like this, and we'll have um, enum class type. Um, and we'll say that there's such a thing as a invalid and then modified. And then we'll say type invalid is the default. And maybe modified is the one that we're gonna do otherwise. Okay, I did. that's fine. Um, and then we will have a vector of these, or maybe even a queue, actually. Okay, so, um, I'm kind of thinking like, what should happen if you fail to read from one of these things and it just accumulates too much? I guess we should start like dropping things if you never drain. Um, well, maybe we can use a circular queue for this. So just to make sure that we don't flood the um, system. How does this work again? Circular queue, event, and you say how many. And then we will say can read is return mq is empty. If it's not empty, then we can read. Or um, if m inode has become null. So like if the inode has gone away, then I guess we can say that we are readable and we can give like um, an end of file. Does that make sense? End of file is like uh, kind of, uh, has like just the right name for this actually. It's like the end of the file. So I think we'll, we'll go with that for now and then we can reconsider later if, if it does not make sense. Perhaps there should be an event that pops up that like the file itself disappeared that you were watching. But I think end of file is, is kind of logical. Um, okay, and then we need sext. Um, need to implement read and write. So we can't guess we can start with write because just takes a const like that. Um, and then we should return zero, or maybe even EIO, because we don't, we can't write to this thing. 
And yeah, let's do absolute path. I never know what to do with these like absolute path functions. They're the they're used to implement this thing in the um, proc file system. I'll show you that you can go and like look up all the file descriptors in the process. Um, so I guess now we are going to be like, oh, let's go in 12 here, see what's in here. So there's a shell process. Um, and then if you go on FD, you see all of these guys and the sim links here. The thing that they point to is the absolute path. So like these are actually just pointing to nonsense basically because um, you couldn't open this and the kernel wouldn't like know how to open that FIFO based on this name. Maybe that's functionality we should have, I don't know. Um, probably they're gonna have to work a little bit differently then. Maybe this should be a, um, I don't know, like a like a file system entry for FIFOs as well, or I don't, know, I don't know. I don't know how that should work, but um, we'll figure something out. Then also, I don't know why this uh, shell process has um, FIFOs open, that's kind of strange. Anyways, uh, that's not the most important thing now. I just wanted to show you what the absolute path was for. So let's get back to uh, back to this. So for these, we'll just say something like um, string format. I know watcher. Okay, now actually, we can do something like this. I know watcher colon, um, and then we'll do the. Um, Thinking we do the inode number, but like if the inode um, if the inode is gone, then we'll just say return string, um, or we can just do like this return inode watcher um, and then the inode is gone, so we'll say like gone deleted. It's kind of cool. Um gone also cool okay and then if we do have an i know then we'll um say put the identifier here so two string characters all right and then we'll do it that way great um now there's only read left so then so we'll say buffer and buffer size uh, if buffer size is less than size of event, then return um, zero. Um, I don't know if that's correct. Fix me. What should we do? Actually, let's assert that buffer size is equal to size of event. And then um, this is not perfect, but it is something. Uh, or uh, greater than. We do if the applet buffer is too small. Let's just be something we do right now. Okay. Um, and then we want to return the size of the event. And we'll do a mem copy um, into buffer from mq. Uh, let's see, um, auto um, event is mq uh, dq event, size of event, size of event. Okay, so we'll read out one of these guys. Plop. There we go. Okay, and then in the syscall, this was it watch file what the hell did i call it wasn't it watch file shit i i was so sure i already started on this oh it's still called file open watch file where the heck did i get this other name from File open. Oh, I did it here too. Uh, well, I guess I was, <laughs> I was talking about like open um, with path and length when I was doing this, and then I 
sometimes my brain does that. Like I'm, if I'm talking about something and trying to type, then I inevitably just end up typing what the hell I'm talking about instead of what I'm trying to type. So not very good at multitasking keyboard and speech. Uh, at least not if they're doing separate things. So, okay, so then let's say um, <clears throat> we're going to need a file descriptor. So we'll say like printfd is allocfd. Um, and then if we can't get one, we'll turn that, I guess. Um, and then. Uh, actually, we can take the inode by reference like this. There's no need. Because some custody will hold on to the inode. So we're good. Um, and then uh, we want to say MFDs set um, file description create. And we create it from a inode watcher, create from the inode. And then we return to FD. And now we just have to implement inode watcher create. Um, and that's going to be uh, non null ref footer inode watcher. Create with an inode. Inode return adopt new inode watcher inode. And uh, up here we just say static. Okay. Then let's include file system inode watcher. And now the remaining thing is that we have to actually put some events into this thing. So uh, I guess what we should do is that the inode watcher should register itself with the inode. So we'll say m inode dot, uh, or even m, yeah, we can just do inode dot um, register watcher this and I know unregister uh, watcher this okay and uh, we should use a batch for this actually because nobody else should be registering watchers uh, okay and we'll say register watcher I know watcher. Uh huh. That's cool. And here we'll say class I know watcher. You can go there. And we are going to have. Does order matter? I guess not. We'll just put them in a hash table. Uh, I have a watcher star, watchers. And then in inode, <laughs> uh, we have to implement these. So we'll say inode register watcher. Uh, we'll assert that we don't already have this watcher because that would be freaking weird. Contains a watcher. And then watchers set watcher. All right, and then same thing for unregister. We'll just do assert that it's in there. Contains watcher. And watchers remove watcher. Cool. All right, then I guess we can have like a little helper function here, something like um, template, type name, callback, 
Uh, really for each watcher. Call back, call back. And we'll say um, for auto ID in M watchers ID. Wait, how does this work again? IP. Oh, I can't do that here because I don't know what inode watcher looks like. Mm. Sketchy. Mm. Well, um, I guess I can live with including it. It's not the end of the world. Well, uh, this is gonna get. I don't want to be like Mr. Header Explosion, so let's just calm down with this convenience function here for a moment. And um, we'll get back to it. Um, okay, so instead, let's just have a look at where uh, M time changes, blah, blah, blah. Flush metadata. So that's a virtual. Uh, set M time is a virtual. So let's see who implements that. In ext2, we call it set metadata dirty. And I'm thinking that set metadata dirty would be maybe like a fair place to update the um, watchers. So if the metadata of, um, of something changes, then, then we might as well consider the file to be altered, right? I think that's fair because Okay, let's just do that because that's the easy way. And then in the future, we might want to do like more fine tooth um, notifications, but not right now. Uh, then, let's see, metadata dirty. We're just going to move this out of line so that we can do more logic here. Um, so this will look like this. We'll say if m metadata dirty is already uh, true. Or it's already what we're setting it to, then we can just return. Um, and then m metadata dirty is metadata dirty. Cool. And then if m metadata dirty is that, then we will uh, walk all the watchers. So auto um, cm watchers. Um, and um, I'm thinking we should probably take the lock while we're doing this, actually. So I'll just say locker, um, M lock. Just take the inode lock. Otherwise, uh, this is not entirely safe. So. Um, and then what do we have here? IT. That's an inode watcher. Well, we'll need to. Um, Okay, so IT watcher. Um, I guess add event and uh, say I know the event. Um, notify I know the event. That's kind of cool. Pass a batch. For inode, and then we'll say that it's um, inode watcher event type modify. Cool. Okay, and then in inode watcher, we need uh, that helper thingy. So We'll add it here and it'll be um, void notify inode event. We'll take a batch inode. And um, we're going to need to include batch. And it will take an event type. So event type. Um, in fact, I suppose we could even take an event like that. Um, But let, uh, let's just take the type for now. That's easier. Um, and then uh, I just have to implement this guy. So we'll just put him down here. I know 
Watcher. Event type. Uh, M uh, Q dot uh, N Q event. And uh, we just give it the event type. Uh, maybe we can actually construct it like this if we are lucky. That would be good. Yep. All right. So it's a fair amount of code. And of course, I forgot to add the um, syscall to for control, even though I was starting on it. So um, I guess we'll just, or should it be in a for control? I don't know. Where's uh, where's the actual for control syscall? Oops, um, int for control. Oh, it is there. Oh, all right, all right, all right. We'll put it here too. Watch file. Our path and line path length. Um, and then we'll see in for control at cpp. Uh, we'll just say int rc is this call c watch file path path length. And we'll return with air now, same way we always do. All right. See how far we can get. All right, so what did I screw up? Forgot something trivial? Undeclared identifier Sterling. Well, that's pretty trivial. And we also need uh, unistd.h. All right, will you let me compile now? This return will never be executed. Yeah, I suppose it won't. Are you gonna warn about that? No, you're not. Um, okay, so what else did we screw up? Call of overloaded mm -hmm is ambiguous. Well, is it now? So it can be either this or that. Um, is that so? I'll just create. Our description create. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's ambiguous. All right, well, I should have paid attention. Fine, sorry. I'll just dereference to disambiguate. It's kind of curious. Why is it like that? Um, what does this thing take? It take? Oh, it takes a ref putter to a file. Well, see, that makes sense then. Um, I mean, it doesn't entirely make sense. Because why wouldn't it allow me to create... What's the other one? Custody? Custody and PAM ref putter. Ah, okay, well, whatever. Um, and then we also forgot to add it to the make file of the kernel. So I'll just put you here, I know watcher. Cool, and we have built. Let's see how this works. Boom. All right, well, kernel boot will monitor dot. And will something happen if we touch a file here? Foo. <gasps> something changed about dot. I'm foo. Well, Hello, RM dear. Hello. <laughs> well, that's pretty sweet. And then if I exit the shell so that it writes to the shell history, it, did it actually work? I don't, I don't know if it actually worked in the shell history or what. Uh, yeah, it did. Wait, where's the shell history then? Oh. <laughs> See, look at me trying to use uh, options that we haven't implemented yet. Um, that history. That's kind of interesting. I, I guess I would have expected that to um, generate an event 
Thomas LA, cat uh, history. Why doesn't it change? Do we not set the end time? Wait, well, we do seem to set the end time. So it would be 45 something when we exit and then we open again. I mean, we are setting the size of it to something different. Um, but we're not changing the end time. Interesting. Why don't we change the end time? How weird is that? Um, set metadata dirty. Um, oh, maybe we are like, um, maybe we're fudging it so that sometimes we don't use the dirty metadata mechanism, but instead we let's see flush metadata. This is kind of about the innards of the ext 2 file system implementation. So um, I think I'm not going to go spelunking in that right now because we see that the basic mechanism works. It's just that maybe the hook point is not just right. Like maybe this isn't where we should be. Maybe we should we should have something more like um, I know it did change. Do we have something like that? I know. Uh, contents changed and size changed. Now that's kind of an interesting one. So we call that here. Um, okay. All right. All right. We can do it in contents changed or size changed. Uh, metadata dirty is fine too, though. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, I'm, I'm just going to leave it here in metadata dirty for now, but we will put like a little note. Fix me. Uh, maybe we should um, hook modification uh, events, hook into modification events uh, somewhere else. I'm not sure where. Um, this, um, we don't always end up on this particular code path, for instance, um, when uh, writing to an ext2 file. All right, the ext dfs file. Um, yeah, and we'll leave the fix me here um, because now we just want to do the um, file system watcher stuff. So uh, let's see what we have. I should load of stuff. Okay, well, I think that the first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna try to uh, commit what we have. So um, let's just add some stuff here. File system, inode watcher, and user land mon. Maybe we'll call it, or mon is kind of cool actually. So we'll just call it that for now. Um, and we'll delete some stuff. Um, okay. Get diff head. Okay, so let's do a patch review. Right. So here is the, um, in the inode, when we want to register a watcher, then uh, we just take the inode lock and then check that we don't already have that watcher and then add it to the watcher set. Fine. And then here, when we unregister, we take the inode lock, make sure that we already do have the watcher and then remove it. Cool. And then we out of line um, set metadata dirty in inode. And then if it's a no op, we just return. Otherwise, we assign the new value. And then if it does become dirty, then we um, send um, inode watcher events to each watcher. So, and there's a fix me here, like if this is really the right place to do this, but since I don't want this to, to like turn into this sprawling video, uh, we're going to stay on focus here um, or on target or whatever, stay focused. Okay. And then here in the inode class, we are um, in extending it to inherit from weakable so that we can create weak putters to inode <coughs> because we need that in the inode watcher. 
And then here in uh, register, uh, we are adding the headers for register watcher and register watcher, blah, 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 to inode. And then we're moving this out of line. And here we're adding the hash table of watchers. Cool. Okay, and here's inode watcher, the class. I mean, actually, let's look at the class definition first. So it's a final that inherits from file. Here's the helper to create it, a structure, and this is an event. And right now we only have the one type of event, so that's fine. Uh, and here are all the virtuals that we override from file. And this looks wrong, so we'll go to inode launcher uh, h. And uh, why do you look like that? Let me add. And you look right now. Oh, shit, I forgot to save. All right. Oopsie doopsie doopsie. Okay, here we are. Right, and then um, here's the notify inode event that only inode can call, and he just gives us a type right now. In the future, this will be extended with more stuff. Uh, constructor is private, so that you have to call this guy to construct one. Um, and the weak putter to inode is here. And here is our 32 entry circular queue, um, just so that we can't flood the system if you create. Um, inode watchers and never read from them, then you will you will drop notifications. Maybe this number should be bigger. I don't know. Like that's that's something that we can figure out along the way. Um, so let's see. And then here's the make file gonk. But let's look at the implementation also of inode watcher. So here's the create helper. Uh, by the way, the reason that I use these create helpers um, I only do these for uh, objects that are reference counted. And the reason is that when we create a new object that uses reference counting, then the initial reference count is one. So I want to um, make sure that I do this thing called adopt, which is where we instantiate a um, smart pointer that adopts that initial one ref count. So this instantiate this here instantiates a non-null ref putter smart pointer um, that doesn't increment the ref count. So it, it's like adopt means that you are taking that first initial ref count and adopting it as your own. Um, normally, if you construct a non-null ref putter by giving it a, like an arbitrary object pointer, it will increment the ref count, but adopt does not. So that's why we do this because otherwise, if we expose the constructor then that would make it possible for um, random code to construct these objects, which would then have a one extra ref count, which would never be adopted by anyone. And um, the object would be very likely to leak that way. So that's why we do it this way. I hope that made sense. Anyway, um, so here's the inode watcher constructor. Um, we make sure we get a weak putter to the inode, and then we register um, this watcher with the inode. So I think that's okay. Um, and then in the destructor, we unregister if the inode still exists. If it doesn't, then, you know, tough cookies. Um, although this pattern is a little bit worrisome because um, this is a weak putter. So like it could go, dis it could disappear in between here. So I don't I don't like that. That's a that's an ugly race. So can we do something like um, ref putter inode is m inode um, safe inode maybe like m inode? Can we do this? No viable conversion from weak putter to ref putter. Um, can I do that? Okay, and then we can do if. Safe. I know. That's kind of cool, because then then we know that like um, now we own it. So that's good. It's probably like a million places where I should have done this. I just realized it now when I was reading the code. So it's a good thing that I thought of this, because well, we're gonna find more of those, I guess. Anyways, so let's add and diff, and let's continue. Uh, where are you? Here, all right. Um, and then can read is whether the queue is non-empty or if the inode is gone. Cool. 
we can always write, but it will always fail. That's fine. And then if we try to read, um, we will, oh shit, we should actually, we should, um, we should say something that like, um, assert m uh, q is empty. We should assert that the q is non-empty because otherwise something is wrong. And um, okay, so what we do in read is that um, we bq an event, a single event, and then we write that out to the buffer. And of course, like the mon the little test, test program, it doesn't actually care what comes in the buffer that it reads out. Um, it's just noticing that something's coming out, and that's all that we wanted to do in this patch anyway. <clears throat> Okay, and writing fails, right? And here's absolute path. I guess we never really looked at what those looked like uh, when generated, so we could take a look at that real quick. Um, if you don't mind compiling, there you go. And then the notify inode event, it just uh, adds it to the queue. Um, so we would be in proc. Or uh, let's actually create a mon. Or hmm, actually, let me do this cd foo mon dot. Um, and who is mon? He is 15. So in proc 15, cat is. We have an inode watcher, and he's watching this inode. And does that match? Uh, oh, my mon. Um, so I. Oh shit. Um, cat FTS. One, two, five, nine, eight, nine. Yeah, I guess that is foo. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. Okay. So we know that that stuff is working, but now I was kind of curious like, what would happen if we actually delete um, the foo directory? Foo. And something changed about it. Well, I'll say. Something certainly changed about it. Uh, now it's gone. <laughs> At least we, we learned that something changed. It's not perfect, so it's definitely going to need some, some more work, but it's a place to start. Uh, all right, and then uh, we, oh yeah, yeah, we also had, oh, here's some unintentional change. Um, has timeout. Um, so it's a clang change, but I don't want to take it because it noises up my commit. Okay, so here's the syscall. First we validate the read that it works, otherwise we default. Okay, and then we get a custody for that path. And if that fails, then we just return the error code. Um, okay, and then we get, we get the custody out and get the inode from the custody. Then we allocate a file descriptor, and if that doesn't work, then we fail. And then otherwise, we um, create a file description and assign it to that file descriptor. Cool. Um, right, and then here we're just adding the header for that. And here's the syscall dispatch. And here's the watch file syscall and this libc um, implementation of the syscall. And here's the mon test program. So I guess the um, on CPP, I guess we can do something like if RC is zero, say um, end of file, return zero. That's cool. Because now I'm kind of curious if that works, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna test it. So, oh yeah, let's make a directory. So foo mon dot, and oh shit, yeah, it's not gonna disappear because I'm in it. So I have to actually do it this way, mon foo. Um, okay, and then I'm gonna do foo plot. Something changed about it, and then we had a horrible crash here. 
Uh, let me keep it empty. Uh, oh, right, right, right. Um, I know a watcher. So we sh when we read, if the queue is empty, not queue is empty or uh, not mi node. Then we'll say if not mi node, turn is zero. Then we do an end of file read. Ah, well, we have to rebuild. But I think this is going to be in pretty good shape. Um, well, foo, and then we will just arm dear foo, and it exits. Beautiful. All right. So let's commit this whole package. Let's say kernel plus libc, or let's say kernel. Um, add a um, mechanism for uh, listening for um, I know modifications changes in an I to an I know um, the syscall is quite simple um, that the is uh, watch file uh, home non. I mean, actually, we can just write in uh, watch file const chart and path length. All right. Um, it returns a file descriptor that's uh, uh, referring to a uh, inode watcher object in the kernel. Um, you can so uh, it becomes readable whenever something changes uh, at the uh, uh, currently this is implemented by King the metadata to read it and I know which isn't perfect, but it's uh, start. Cool. All right. Now, um, I wanted to use this for the. Um, I wanted to use it for the file manager. So let's just see if we can do that right quick. Um, I guess this would be in the directory view class. Is that the one that I'm using? Directory view. Yeah, that's the thing. So I guess we can just say whenever we open the new path, um, in the directory model path, when we set a path, uh, how do we want this to work? We'll just call update whenever it changes. Um, so we can use a lib core G um, C notifier and notifier. Um, how the hell do we implement? This G directory model and notifier. I don't remember how these work. Um, file descriptor and event mask. Oh, we need the file descriptor. Well, then we're going to have to use a smart pointer. Uh, forget about that one. I'll just use an own footer. Okay. And then uh, whenever we set the path to something, here we'll say m notifier is make c notifier uh, watch fd is um, 
watch file, path characters, and path length. And say if watch. If watch FD is less than zero, then I guess we can pair. That should always work. Oh, right, and up here we'll say like if m notifier and m notifier, or um, like this if m notifier, then uh, close m notifier fd. Just to make sure that we close the previous one. And then here um, we'll create a new one with the watch fd. And what was the other param? The event mask. So C notifier event read read and then um, in the callback we're gonna do on ready to read is um, place Did that have any arguments no so just this way I'll just say update well. I'm certainly feeling uh, like this might work. Let's find out. I think this is not exactly perfect because there's all kinds of things that maybe we should also be caring about in the um, in the GUI here. But I think um, this might give us a little bit of a, the effect that we're looking for. And, uh, we don't have to do everything today. So let's see that original thing that we tried. Touch foo. Ah, look at that. It just showed up. Freaking awesome. All right. And we crashed because why? Because we got a sick child and because whatever. All kinds of problems that are totally unrelated to this. Yep. Well, I'm not going to care about that right now. <clears throat> because my thing worked. These are just other things to fix that we don't have to do right now. So let's do a second patch review here of the um, little directory model fix. So in the directory model, we now have a C notifier, which is this handy little helper class that will um, fire a callback whenever a file descriptor becomes readable or writable. So um, I guess I should have explained it while I was using it, but yeah, so this is how you use it. Um, you just instantiate one, you pass it a file descriptor, and then the mask of the events that you're interested in. So we were only interested in read events. And then we uh, also give it a callback here on ready to read. Then it will call us and we'll say update. And that will update the, the directory model, which was the backing for the file manager. All right. Say so, um, directory model. Um, watch the directory, watch the open directory for uh, changes and auto update. Auto, automatically update on uh, file system change. Use the um, fancy uh, new uh, file watch, uh, watch file mechanism to um, monitor the currently open directory for changes and uh, refresh the model uh, when uh, notified. This makes the file manager uh, automatically, uh, auto magically. I'm gonna say automatically here. It's automatically is a cool word. Uh, automatically uh, show newly added files. Awesome. Okay, I think that um, that that's uh, going to be it for today's video, but we are going to see that one more time because it was neat. So um, yeah, come on, here we go. And uh, maybe we'll go in temp this time. Temp, and we'll go to TMP and we'll say touch foo, touch bar, touch baz. Very, very cool. We'll even make a directory. A directory. Aha. 
Um, awesome. So if you made it this far, then I thank you for watching and for hanging out with me while I continue to work on this crazy project. Um, I really appreciate, really appreciate that you're all here. Uh, and I appreciate the likes and the comments and the discussion and everything. It's, it's really, really fun. And uh, keep coming back, you, all, you guys. Uh, and I will see you next time.